In the picturesque town of Haddonfield, nestled beneath the tranquil cloak of night, an aura of dread began to unravel. Halloween had arrived, and with it, an unspeakable evil would awaken. Michael Myers, just a young boy of six years old, stood ominously on the porch of his family's home. In his hand, he clutched a gleaming butcher knife, an instrument chosen with a purpose, its glint reflecting the malevolence that emanated from within him. Michael had committed an unspeakable act, a brutal murder of his own sister. This monstrous deed had led him to the confines of Smith's Grove Sanitarium, a place meant to contain the unimaginable darkness that had taken root in his soul. Dr. Sam Loomis, Michael's psychiatrist, knew the truth. He had witnessed the vacant, lifeless eyes of his patient. Michael Myers was no ordinary boy. He was a manifestation of evil incarnate. Yet on this Halloween night, the sanitarium's gates swung open and Michael escaped into the obsidian abyss beyond. The path he left behind was one of bloodshed and chaos. Each life he extinguished fueled the malevolent journey back to Haddonfield, back to the place where it all began. In the quiet suburbs of Haddonfield, Laurie Strode, an unsuspecting high school student, prepared for a night of revelry with her friends. Oblivious to the lurking terror, she and her companions readied themselves for a Halloween night like no other. But as darkness descended upon the town, a palpable sense of foreboding took root. The streets grew eerily silent, and the once jovial atmosphere turned laden. Laurie, walking home alone, felt a disquieting presence, an insidious gaze trained upon her. Her heart began to race, and a cold shiver slithered down her spine. From the shadows, Michael Myers emerged, a figure as unscrutable as the night itself. His mask concealed his visage, but his malevolent intent was clear. He stalked Laurie, his steps as deliberate as death's own march. The night grew colder, the wind whispered sinister secrets, and the leaves rustled with a mysterious murmur. Laurie's breath quickened as she realized she was not alone. Someone, or something, was following her, a predator closing in on its prey. Unbeknownst to Laurie, Dr. Loomis, driven by an unshakable belief in the evil that had returned, raced to Haddonfield. He knew that the only way to stop this undeniable evil was to confront it head on. In a heart-pounding climax, Laurie Strode found herself trapped within her own home. Her sanctuary turned into a chamber of terror. The air was filled with a suffocating tension as their deadly encounter unfolded. In this suffocating darkness of Laurie Strode's home, the tension had reached its zenith. The walls seemed to close in, as if the very house conspired with the malevolent force that had invaded it. Laurie, breathless and petrified, clung to her last shreds of hope, while Michael Myers, the relentless embodiment of evil, advanced with a measured, deliberate pace. Their deadly dance had reached its climax, and Laurie had nowhere left to run. In the dim, flickering light of the hallway, she glimpsed the glint of the butcher knife in Michael's hand, a gleam of cold steel that seemed to mock the fragility of her existence. He grabbed her. As they struggled, Laurie pulled up the dead white mask of Michael Myers, revealing his face for a moment. It was almost as horrifying as his mask. He quickly pulled it back down, replacing the horror with another. Just as all seemed lost, the deafening sound of a gunshot pierced the air, a visceral explosion that shattered the dreadful silence. Dr. Sam Loomis, the psychiatrist who had dedicated his life to understanding the malevolent abyss that was Michael Myers, had arrived in the nick of time. His gun aimed squarely at the masked figure. Dr. Loomis had one purpose, to stop the unstoppable, to pierce through the heart of the unsolvable mystery. The bullet, propelled by fear and determination, found its mark. Michael Myers, for the first time in a long night, stumbled backwards, his malevolent intent momentarily thwarted. The mask, an impenetrable visage of death, remained unchanged. But for a fleeting instant, there was a crack in the facade, a flicker of something resembling surprise. He retreated to the next room. Loomis followed. Here he found Michael standing dead still in the dark, just the thin line of light piercing his mask. Loomis fired again, then again, and again, and again, and then one final time as Michael stumbled backwards with each time a bullet thumped into his large body, until eventually he went tumbling over the balcony, falling two stories to the garden below. Laurie, still trembling, could barely believe her eyes. Dr. Loomis had risked everything to save her, to confront the purest form of evil, and for that brief moment, it seemed as though he had succeeded. Laurie looked up to Loomis. What's the boogeyman? She said. As a matter of fact, it was, replied Loomis. But evil, they would soon learn, was not so easily extinguished. Loomis peered over the edge of the balcony to the garden down below. Nothing. Michael Myers, fueled by an unquenchable darkness, would rise once more to haunt the night. Dr. Loomis, burdened with the knowledge that evil could not be destroyed by mere bullets, would be left with a lingering question. Could true evil ever really be defeated? 
And so, as the chilling strains of John Carpenter's iconic score enveloped the night, a lingering sense of dread settled upon Haddonfield. The confrontation between Dr. Loomis and Michael Myers had ended, but the malevolence endured, ready to rise again and terrorise those who dared to cross its path on Halloween night. Alright guys, thanks so much for listening to that. That was my little Halloween treat. A dramatic reading of sorts, summarising the story of Halloween. Of course, this was skipping out a bunch of bits from the story. I wanted to keep it short more as a test than anything else. So if you guys enjoyed this, I'd be happy to do full dramatic scary readings. Summarising all your favourite scary movies. And of course, they wouldn't be short like this when I basically summarised this in about a thousand words. But no, I would definitely go into full detail if this is something you guys enjoyed and want to see more of. So again, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Happy Halloween, my friends. It's that time of year. Let's make the most of it. Lock your doors and bolt your windows. And I'll see you next time on Dead Scared.